What's up YouTube? Homebrew Subaru. I'm trying to uh, continue on with this STI block today. Uh, it's still fairly cold in my uh, garage so I get the, the heater blasting on high right now just to let it warm up. Uh, I was going through some old pics and actually in my last in last Thursday's episode I mentioned that um, my girlfriend had got me that license plate and that I'd seen it before in a uh, museum and uh, I actually took pictures and so here's those pictures uh, so me and my buddy were on a trip down and probably a year and a half ago down to Vancouver and we stopped in this little museum and I saw those and I just had to take a picture because I was pretty amazed at all the how many different colors there were you know they would just change the colors over the years see so yeah, I, I thought it was pretty neat that I was just going through old pictures and I actually found those and uh, but anyway Time to move on. We got a block to do here, and so what I gotta get done, pretty much, or want to get done, is uh, I want to get the oil pump swapped over, the water pump, and uh, the oil cooler. So I'll probably have to lift this thing back up. I'm probably gonna have to put that AC alternator bracket back on for like the third time or something. Uh, and then I'll have to break this clamp down here, and get the hose over. I'll have to probably get a normal style gear clamp to put back on. Uh, knock sensor. Whether or not I put that bracket over for now, I probably won't. Um, and then, yeah, once that, uh, once that stuff's kind of on, I'd like to actually move on to uh, working with the head studs because this, this new block is actually drilled for the half inch ARP head studs, which are larger. It requires the the heads to be the hole the holes for the head studs to be opened up a little bit, just one millimeter. So it's not very much. Pretty easy to do. Um, but yeah, I'd like to get those at least installed, and I don't know. We'll see what happens from there. So first, we'll take this off. And it'll just go right back here with the new clamp. Next I'll take this off and it'll go right back here. And next, these two guys. tiny little dribble of red Loctite on that and thread it back into place on the new one and we can't put this in yet because the oil pump needs to be there hmm. so I do have these front plugs to to put in I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite as an anaerobic sealer on the threads and he's also got new washers that go in there.
Next, I can just get rid of this crank pulley that's just sitting on there. Now we have to get off this uh, crank sprocket. And sometimes they just almost slide right off. But a little, little bit of prying. This one came off nice and easy. Now this key is either stamped or glued in, but believe it or not, I do need to install it on the other crankshaft, so it needs to be knocked out of there. And it must go on to the new one. So next I'll just go ahead and take off the water pump, these 10 mil bolts going around it, hold it on. I'll probably leave on this water neck for now, change the thermostat afterwards. Just a little love tap. Have it right off of there. I need to get rid of this uh, hose going over to the oil cooler. And now kind of the same thing holding the oil pump on. So just all these 10 mil bolts going across the front. Uh, we need to take off this bracket for this cooling line, cooling hose. So making sure that you have all the bolts out. The sealant holding, holding the oil pump on is pretty, pretty good stuff. It'll hold it on there really well. Um, but they give you a nice little spot to kind of get in behind here and, and start trying to pry it. Now you don't want to pry so hard that you might crack something, but usually just one good bop and it'll break most of the sealant loose for you. Prying up here, uh, these are easily cracked or broken. The, the little holder or the mount for the crank position sensor so just be careful if you're gonna ever gonna be prying up there just get in behind the pump and just a quick bop and they usually come loose just let that drain for a little bit now I'll go ahead and get the oil filter and the oil cooler off definitely have a drain pan because there's definitely more oil in it this threaded center section has a 24 millimeter nut on the top there and that's basically where the oil filter is threading onto but if we unthread this this will just act like another oil filter and come right off and then there's just one last hose for the water in the back here and I'll also have to probably take this fitting out uh, that the hose connects to to thread into the new block this fitting for the for the water hose is also a 24 No gasket, but certainly a lot of Loctite on it. And the last thing I really need off this block is this tensioner support bracket. And 
And I believe, other than these, this AC bracket and the bracket in the back, uh, pretty sure that's it. I mean, the flywheel's got to come off, but I have a new separator plate and a new uh, piston wrist pin cover. So I think that is it. And over back over here on the new block, put this bracket right back on. So I've just looked everywhere. I cannot find a torque spec for these. I'm not really concerned about the torque as long as they're tight and they don't strip. Um, so we're just gonna give them another hit. And that's it. And this water plug has still got quite a bit of stuff on it. I'm just gonna give it a quick dab of red Loctite just to use as a thread sealer. Fortunately, I had a new water pump gasket here from, from a, I guess some timing kit or something. One of my old jobs. So I can put the water pump on. So the water pump bolts uh, are torqued A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, they're about nine foot pounds, 8.9 foot pounds. So I convert, converted to inch pounds. I'm about 108 inch pounds. That's the water pump on. The IAG stage three block is pre-drilled for half inch ARP head studs. So you have to buy them. Um, this means that the cylinder heads need to be drilled open a little bit to accept this larger stud that will not pass through. But it's, it's only about a millimeter larger as the stock is about 12 millimeter and a half inch converts to about 13 millimeter. So to install these, they just want you to thread them in by hand um, to the point that they kind of stop on their own. And then as you um, put your cylinder head on and, and tighten them up, at that point is when uh, the real tightening all happens because it's more of a clamping type of way of tightening. So I'm just going to try and gently thread this in. I mean they're tight. I, I did. That's why I, I had to... That doesn't feel good at all. Well that doesn't feel very good to me so I'm, I'm just going to back it out. Try and get a good look down that hole. Yeah, like when I look down these holes, like and I, I look at the threads, and I realize this is an extremely coarse thread, but it looks like, you know, it looks like I drilled and tapped them here in my garage. Like, maybe let's try this center hole. getting to the same spot and, it, and it's stopping just doesn't seem to be the same thread pitch
Okay, well, this bottom hole is taking it really well. That's how I expect them to go in. Yeah, I don't know. Something, something's, something's not right here. I threaded so easily into these holes, and now it seems all the rest, the rest of them just won't take the stud. So I don't know. I do have a half inch tap with the appropriate thread. It's just national course thread. And it's threading in there pretty, pretty good. So maybe it just needs those initial threads cleaned out a little bit. And really, it's stuff like this that can uh, just really waste your time. You. Uh, Expect this to be proper so that you can just do assembly and now you're taking care of issues that don't really pertain to what you know what you're, what you're actually doing. I don't know, I sunk this tap in there pretty far and it went half decently smooth. So I'm just gonna try and slowly work its way back out. certainly went further than the stud does. Oh, wait a second. This one's going in. Yes, sir. Nope, still doesn't want to, still doesn't want to work in there. So I'm going to have to pretty much run the tap down every hole, which is, you pay this kind of money, you expect not to have to do that. Still doesn't want to go in. And there is metal coming out, I can see it now. And this one's a little bit tight going in, but it is going in by hand. That was three passes with the tap to try and get the stud to go in there. And when that stuff starts to happen, you shake your head like, what else is going on with this block? So yeah, all the studs are in. I don't have the other side done yet, but uh, I've got some other things to do. I'm really, at this point, waiting on seals and gaskets, so just a couple of them, not very much. But I need uh, I need this little O-ring seal for the rear of the oil pump. Uh, I'll probably pick up a fresh tube of gray RTV to start reassembly on some things. And uh, I do need to clean up the heads. And now that this side's together, I could pretty much bolt this head on that is going to do it for this video and uh, I hope to have a Sunday video where I can start some reassembly or either that or I'll move on to the intake manifold and maybe do the T TGV deletes or something like that but I'll just have to take things as I go because uh, I don't have everything and it's kind of difficult for me to plan what's next so I'll just have to attack it as it, as it comes kind of thing so if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please consider hitting that subscribe button for me leave your questions and comments further down below and i'll see you in the next one